Hey guys, this is Nate from RunDreamAchieve.com. Hope you're having a great weekend of training. Uh, hope everything's going well for you guys out there. Um, I know we've been talking a lot lately on different strategies to run your best in the middle distance to long distance races. And today's video, um, I wanted to talk on how to prepare for a long run because I'm, I am getting a lot of questions in regards to uh, you know what what's the proper uh, method of getting the best results uh, preparing for long runs in preparation for your upcoming races if you're brand new to the channel uh, definitely please click on the subscribe button so and, and that bell icon so when I make a new video you'll be notified of it and if you can I'd really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up I'd really appreciate that it continues to to help the the channel grow and to reach more people so um, you know, for me personally, I know I have a lot of background in the sport of middle to long distance running, but it's very difficult to get the message out unless uh, this channel grows. So I really appreciate all of you uh, taking the time out to hear these videos. Um, I, the reason why I wanted to make this video on how to prepare for a long run is because of the number of questions that I get on, you know, should I run every long run hard or do I need to, uh, you know, what percentage of my long run should I uh, run at a heart at a faster effort? And you know, one of my subscribers, Rodrigo Flores Ramirez, said, um, "Hey, dude, and I'm in the middle of a of ultra training today. I woke up and simply didn't feel mentally ready to run even a 10k. Man, I, I've been there, Rodrigo. Um, I know exactly how you feel. You know, you're you're gonna have a lot of ups and downs, a lot of ebbs and flows when it comes to." Uh, you know training for the longer distances and I have run I've never run an ultra but I have I guess I could consider myself an ultra marathoner because I did do uh, a 30 mile long run at 606 mile pace when I was training for um, the 2011 monumental Indianapolis marathon I have done a 27 miler and a 28 miler but I do uh, give you guys kudos for that are that are out there doing those 100 milers and 50 milers you guys are incredible but he, he kind of just said you know I, I didn't really feel like getting out the door to run the 10k you know to even run a 10k everything you said really helped me realize I've been training really hard and I need to recharge mentally for long runs and not put pressure on myself so that right there is a key tactic you need to you need to keep the the fun in your training especially when you're preparing for longer distance whether whether you're training for the mile or the all the way up to the marathon distance or you're an ultra marathoner you need to to keep your sense of humor, know that you know all, all you can do and all you can focus on in terms of the long run is what you can control. You can't control what the weather is going to be like. Um, you, you can control what you listen to. Uh, if you're if you're constantly watching the news, you, that's not a, a good way because all the news does is just uh, sh sh all all that all the news does is basically share negativity. Uh, how to prepare for a long run. You need to mentally rehearse what you're wanting to do over and over again in training so that it becomes like you've calloused your mind to, to do what you want first in your mind before it actually becomes a reality. And I, and I know this works and I know how powerful the subconscious mind is because when I was a 243 marathoner, I continually visualized myself over and over and over again breaking the two hour and 22 minute marathon barrier. That was my goal back in 2007. I wanted to, I wanted to achieve a USA Olympic trials, USA track and field Olympic trials B standard time. Back then it was, it was two hours, 22 minutes flat, which comes out to about five minutes and 25 seconds per mile for 26.2 miles. And when you're at a, at a certain level and you, and you, you, you continually rehearse what you want to do over and over again, but it's difficult when you're at you're at a particular level and you're trying to make that next big jump, uh, and it and it's a monster jump. It's maybe something that you really don't even know that you're you're capable of doing. You have to believe it mentally first. And I really think in terms of how to prepare for a long run, uh, yeah, you you have to get in that mindset like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get out there and I'm gonna make it happen. But what I don't want you guys doing is I do not want you guys running hard every single weekend on the long run. You don't need to, you know, if you're preparing for, regardless of what distance you're preparing for, it's very important to lay that foundation of mileage first. You wanna spend at least four to six weeks just jogging, running base mileage, build that mileage base first. You don't just build a, a house without a foundation. So you have to put in, um, you know, 
gradually over time build up your your volume of training in terms of your mileage whether kilometers or mileage uh, don't get so caught up in volume uh, rather than you know focus more on quality but early on as you're building your fitness focus just on putting in those miles and, and staying consistent you have to be willing to do that on a consistent basis over a long period of time outstanding middle to long distance running performances come about through consistent action tenacious activity and the mindset of, of a warrior and you have to in the fact that you're already seeking that you know how do I prepare for a long run and all the uh, the people that leave the comments on the videos uh, you know it already tells me you guys are already driven you're already motivated you already want success but when it comes to middle and long distance running I wish there was an easy answer I could give you guys but there it doesn't happen overnight I you know I didn't just run 219 for the marathon or or um, you know 50 54 for 10 miles it, it took me and I wasn't the fastest runner of course I've ran um, you know I've run 107 of six for for the half marathon 144 05 for 20 miles uh, 219 for the marathon but I had many failures I had many bad workouts uh, I had many bad long runs um, but what you need to do is you need in terms of how to prepare for a long run is you need to gradually over time build up your fitness so you get to a point where your heart doesn't have to work as hard anymore you know early on it's gonna be very difficult you know when you, you're not very fit um, you know going out and running say a, a five or six mile run if you're more of an advanced runner um, may maybe may feel like a 20 to 20 you know five miler early on as you're as you're getting fit but the body always adapts you know, it takes about three weeks for your body to adapt to any anaerobic, any type of uh, stress load that you're, you're throwing at it. So it, your, the workouts you do today, the benefits from the workouts you do today are going to be, are going to come about weeks from now. So don't be in a rush in terms of your preparation. But in terms of how I prepared for my long runs, uh, one, I, I wasn't so concerned about pace early on as I was building my fitness. I just wanted to get to a point where I could move from like say a, a seven to eight miler up to a, a 12 miler and then a 16 miler and then being able to just do that at a nice easy relaxed pace and get to a point where I could get out to around 16 to 20 miles. Then as I started doing, you know, like I talk about in the videos, getting on the track and doing those hard VO2 max workouts, getting to a point where you're pushing your, your, your maximum heart rate up to around 94 up to 100 plus uh, percent of your maximum heart rate along with doing those tempo runs at, at closer to your your lactate thresh, threshold effort which is closer to around um, 90 to 92 percent of your maximum heart rate all these types of workouts build up and as you get fitter your heart doesn't have to work as hard you can do the same distance in terms of your long run but you can do it at a faster clip and you're building up less lactic acid as you were early on when you weren't very fit so the body always adapts and always remember progression you know big results no, I don't care if you're training for the mile or you're training for the marathon distance big results come over m many months and many years uh, I always stress that it took me over it took me from 2002 uh, really from 1992 when I first started running uh, up until 2007 until I broke the two hour and 20 minute marathon barrier okay so Few people are willing to stick with something for that many years. So whatever you're doing, in terms of whatever distance you're, you're preparing for, whatever goal that you have in mind, know that it is going to take some hustle on your part. There is, you know, there's no, um, there's no easy way to great results in our sport. The best distance runners, the best middle distance runners I've trained with over the years, Olympians, uh, athletes that could run way faster than I could run for the marathon and for the half marathon and pretty much every distance uh, always taught me a, a, a valuable lesson in the importance of just being tenacious I don't care what it is that you love to do whether it's running or you're, you have a hobby or something that you love doing to get good at it you have to continually practice over and over and over again and in terms of this this question of how to prepare for a long run you gotta be consistent you know be consistent uh, practice taking in and ingesting more fluids during your long run uh, that's something that really helped me because as a marathon runner I, I it took me years before I could really get the marathon right and one of the biggest mistakes I was making was I was not ingesting enough fluid 
and I wasn't practicing that in my long runs. So what I, I did, I started doing was I started forcing myself just to see how much fluid I could take in during my long runs in training first. So I always stress, make the mistakes in training, you know, so you can adjust, so you can see how much fluid you're taking in, uh, practice, in practice also taking in some gels so you're, you're seeing how your, your stomach can handle that, you know, that extra um, sugar in your system along with the fluid. Sometimes you just wanna drink water and try that. Uh, and, and, and test your body to really burn fat uh, more efficiently. And really that's the key overall, as you get fitter and fitter anaerobically, uh, you wanna teach the body to burn fat at race pace and conserve carbohydrate. So a big reason why a lot of us, you know, middle distance, long distance runners, especially with the marathon marathoners and half marathoners, you guys are really gonna know, um, most oftentimes, most athletes hit this so-called wall we hear about, and I've hit that wall, so I know, but I also know that you can not experience the wall, because I didn't experience a wall when I broke 220. I didn't experience a wall when I broke 227. I ran 226.42 for fifth place at the 2011 Monumental Indianapolis Marathon. And you don't have to experience that. The problem is, there's a couple reasons. A big reason why a lot of athletes hit the wall is because they, they, they're not they're running too fast, too early in the race, and they simply, their muscles shut down, they're not prepared to handle that, that hard anaerobic effort for that period of time. And they're simply, they simply haven't spent enough time or sufficient time running long enough and preparing for a long enough period of time to train and, and to maintain that pace for the entire race. I had made the same mistake but it took me you know, years in consistent action. Again, how to prepare for a long run, you continue to find out what works, what isn't working in your training, and really focus in on the things that are working and steer away from the things that, you ha that haven't gotten you the best results that you really want uh, over the years. So I, I think that in terms of not hitting a wall in the race, uh, if you spend enough time training at speeds a combination of speeds that are closer to your VO2 max. Uh, spend some time doing extending the amount of distance that you're running for your tempo runs, where you're training at a closer between 88 to 92 percent of your maximum heart rate around there. And you start doing your long runs not every single weekend, but every other weekend. And especially as you get really fit. Again, I cannot stress this enough in terms of the long run. Spend you know four to six weeks, four to eight weeks around that range running base mileage and then start implementing more specific types of efforts. Like if you may go out and when you're really fit, and this is an example of some, some, some of my long runs that I did. When I was really, really fit, I would warm up with say like a two mile jog, and then I would do 12 miles running at 160 beats per minute, um, which at that time was about 80, when I was in my early 30s, I'm 44 now, but when I was training to break 220, I was 31. And I would do, say, a two, like I said, a two mile warm up, jogging. Then I would run 12 miles at 160 heart rate. And when I was very fit, I was able to do that at around between 525 mile pace and 550 mile pace at 6,000 feet altitude. I would, most of the time, I would do my long run on flat surfaces. Sometimes I, you know, would go out uh, and, and do some over hills too, as well. But I would say I would do 12 miles at that effort, drop back down to two miles recovery, just nice and easy. Then I would drop a sub four minute or sub five minute mile for, for one mile, very, very hard. Drop back into um, say like four miles at 150 heart rate beats per minute. And then do another sub five minute mile. Very, very, uh, a very type of effort uh, for, for the long run. And then the following week, I would just go out and jog. I already knew the distance I was, I was running. I didn't care if I was running. And most often times, I would run anywhere from like eight to nine minute mile pace on my recovery long runs. So it's not just about running fast. It's about bagging off and, and allowing your body to recover from these really, really hard efforts you're doing. But, but I will tell you that in terms of how to prepare for the long run, for me personally, the long run was in was by far the hardest workout I ever did as a middle distance and, and later on as I uh, you know progressed in the sport long distance runner it wasn't the repeat miles at 445 mile pace uh, per rep at 6,000 feet at Cheyenne Mountain High School in Colorado Springs 
actually it was 6,400 feet. It wasn't the repeat two miles, uh, the three by two mile reps. When I was very fit, I could get a, at, at sub 950 per rep. I would do three of those with a five minute recovery between reps. It wasn't those types of workouts. It wasn't the speed, the hard repeat 200s. It was the long run <clears throat> because it's very, very different to go out and run 18 to 22 miles at, you know, say you're, uh, uh, you're trying to run a three hour marathon. So you need to run 652 mile pace. You, it's one thing to go out and do a, a 20, 18 to 22 mile run at 7:30 mile pace. That's that's quality running for somebody that's trying to break three hours. But if you go out and you try to run a, a percentage of that long run at you know at paces that are slightly slower than your lactate threshold, that's a much more uh, m mentally you got to be you got to be in it up here, you know, and you have to. You have to really pay attention to the little details that that most athletes that are so much in a rush uh, miss, like drinking enough, like taking in enough calories during the long run, uh, like changing up paces and, and seeing what works and what isn't working in training. Make the mistakes in training first. Like so, when you can get to the race, somebody's gonna throw a surge at you, but you already know that you've you've done your homework. That's why when I Prior to going into the 2007 California International Marathon, my personal best for the half marathon was 107.06, but my personal best for the marathon was two hours, 40 minutes, and two seconds. So when I went out with those those lead Kenyans who had personal best of like 208 to 212, I was running with a Russian uh, Canadian guy who, who had like a two, Charles Bedley was his name, I think he had run like 214. Um, and, and the two guys that beat me, the two Kenyans that beat me for first and second, and Charles, who was the Canadian, who beat me, f who finished third that year in 216, I was fourth in 219, and the Russian that finished behind me, who ran 223, that Russian had a 212 marathon personal best. So when I was in the race with these guys, they were throwing the surges, but most of the time, for the majority of that race, I was leading the race. I actually was leading the race up to 21 miles before I started falling off the, the pace. I was ready. I had done my homework and I had persisted long enough to be able to handle what they were throwing at me because of those long runs. I got beyond just running nice, long, slow run, long runs every single weekend. And granted, there is a place for easy running. It's, it's still very important. But you also have to keep in mind that if you're trying to run a specific time and you're trying to hold that effort for over a long period of time, you have to spend longer periods of time running at a higher percentage of your your maximum heart rate, and most athletes, it's it's a it's a new mindset to be able to to be going out running faster for uh, longer periods of time during your long run. So that's what I want you guys to really focus on uh, in in the coming months in, in terms of your long run. Always alternate one harder effort followed the next week by a relaxed effort. I'm talking super slow. Don't even get caught up in pace. Most oftentimes, if you know the, the length of your long run, you know the course of your long run, don't wear a watch. You can if you want. Just don't get caught up in the pace on those recovery days. I'm telling you, all the benefits from our hard work, those track sessions, those, those, those hard workouts on the track or on the roads, are going to come in the rest. So pay attention to that. That's how you're going to prepare for the long run and how to prepare effectively over a long period of time. Mentally get in your head what you want to do and continue to visualize yourself over and over and over again. Spend about 10 to 20 minutes each day. Just close your eyes, turn off everything. Maybe when, before you go to bed at night or when you wake up in the morning. Spend some time seeing yourself coming across the finish line with the, with the time on the clock and what you really want to run. You know, I did that same thing. And when I turned around, the, when I rounded that left-hand uh, corner going into the, the Capitol building in Sacramento, I still remember there was 219.12 on the clock. And I visualized so many times prior to that race, seeing 221.59 on the clock before, um, you know, while I was still a 243 marathoner. So I really want you guys to know that it is possible, but it's, you, it's not just enough just to visualize yourself succeeding. You have to put in the work, as you guys know. There's no easy route to success in distance running or anything else. You have to consistently do it on a consistent basis and be tenacious about what you're doing. But at the end of the day, still have fun. Enjoy yourself. Don't get so caught up. Uh, don't beat yourself up if you had a, had a bad workout or a bad race. 
Be thankful that you're that you're physically fit, that you can get out the door and do the things that a lot of people aren't willing, aren't able to do. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, again, if you're brand new to the channel, click on the subscribe button, hit that bell icon, share this video with as any any many as many people as you know uh, that that may you know get some value from this. And if you have any specific questions, if there's something else that I need to um, you, you want me to answer in either in a video or just you know, in most cases, if somebody leaves me a comment, I do my very best to, to respond to that. So appreciate you guys, and I will talk to you all in the next video.